My name is Justin Conway, and I play in a band called Conway the Whale. I would define the genre, at the time I would have called it folk punk music. I'm not gonna try to bring you guys down, but this first song is about the worst day of my life, and it goes a little like this. driveway used to be here. There was a kind of a breezeway, which is kind of like a side entrance in the center of the house where family would come in for lunch. My mom would get off for lunch and she'd have her lunch break here. My grandma, she'd always cook for an army even though her kids hardly ever came, you know. My whole life changed in 10 minutes. If I had to boil the whole experience down to one word, the word would be unpredictable. And I still feel to this day that every time I leave the house might be the last time I ever see the house or anything inside. I think the song Two Years resonates with people because it represents an artist that is going through one of the darkest times in their life. After a year or so, I thought, I need to, instead of tell the story over and over again the same way I always do, I'm gonna write it in a song that hopefully I can make something positive out of this so that way people can hear the story, but also they could see that it doesn't end at that. The disaster doesn't have to define you. And I think people like it because they are surprised to hear someone um, put it all out there in a way that is honest. I, I wrote the song from the perspective of my mother. In 2011, I was volunteering at the Austin City Limits Music Festival in Zilker Park in Austin, and I was having a great time. And on the second day, I got a phone call from my mom, and she wanted to tell me before I heard from anybody else, is that she took my grandmother out to run some errands, maybe to a, a doctor's appointment or to go shopping, and they brought her home. My mom brought my grandmother to her bedroom and uh, left her there to go to the living room, get on the computer, check her social media. And as she's sitting there, she smells something strange. And she gets up and she goes into her mother's bedroom and she finds her on fire. Um, she has no idea why this happened or how this happened, but she, she takes the dress off of her because the dress is on fire and brings my grandmother naked into the kitchen, sits her down, and then she goes out to the car to get the wheelchair. Um, but by the time she comes with the wheelchair, the whole house is full of black smoke. And she's able to get my grandmother out of the house, but at that point, the whole house was already up in flames. The neighbors called the fire department. And it wasn't until I went and saw the house and when I went to Sam Houston and I went into that room and I saw my grandma and I saw that she could only communicate through blinking and that she had to be in a room that was like over 90 degrees because germs grow in cold temperatures and stuff like that. When I, that, you know, it kind of brought it all home. My dog, which was missing for a week and I had held hope that I would see them again, that they'd be just running around the neighborhood. But uh, they had hid under my bed and probably asphyxiated. And so um, I followed the flies and I went out and I lifted the bed as best as I could. And I kind of scooped him up and carried him down here to this edge of the yard where there was a hole already. And I just kind of filled it in over him and, you know, at least, at least he wasn't gonna get hauled off with the rest of the trash and the, the rubble. My advice for people who are going through a similar situation or a personal tragedy is to not carry it all by yourself because people wanna help you. People wanna see you do well and heal. And 
I absolutely had friends around me that, you know, my friends and my chosen family, they, they did fundraisers, they donated instruments to me, they gave me all these kinds of things to a point to where I couldn't feel sorry for myself. I, all I could see was that I was surrounded by my favorite people who loved me and cared for me. And if I would have kept it all in, I don't know that I'd be here today.
So, as far as punk rock is concerned, I don't think there would be a punk rock without the blues. And essentially, I think the song is a blues song because it takes the suffering and it makes something worthwhile.